I'm thrilled to kick off today's video where we're diving deep into strategies that will supercharge your deal closing prowess. I'll arm you with a toolkit of tips, techniques, and savvy tricks to tackle prospect hesitations head on, ensuring you don't freeze up and miss out on opportunities, much like a character getting brutally destroyed in Mortal Kombat because you didn't know what combo to pull off in response to an objection. Toasty. I'll also share how AI and automations can be the secret source that turns a hesitant prospect into a solid close and transforms a skeptical client into an easy upsell. Now, these insights aren't just theoretical ponderings, they're tried and true tactics straight from the playbook of our top partners among the 60,000 plus agencies that we collaborate with. These pros have honed their skills over years of client interactions, and I'm happy to pass them on to you to learn. Let's dive in. Okay, let's tackle the first objection. Now, this one's relevant for situations where a lead is hesitant to work with you because they've been burnt by another agency in the past, or they simply want a lot of assurance about what they're gonna get out of working with you. Now, how you wanna handle this is to come at it from a position of empathy. You gotta understand that the longer someone has been a business owner, the better sense they have for a snake oil salesman or a fly-by-night operator. They're going to be nervous about opening their wallets until they trust you. So if a client has been burned, you do want to highlight that like with any job or industry, there are good and bad apples, and that applies to agencies as well. Okay, so here's a valuable tip from one of our partners and the exact words he uses when dealing with this type of objection. It sounds like you've been burned before, and I'm sorry to hear that. It's clear I have some work ahead of me to earn your trust and demonstrate that we're different. Then it's important to delve into specifics. So after you've established some empathy with them, you then want to ask them to provide insights into their previous agency's actions. So for example, did they give you access to analytics or your own website login? Can you show me the invoices from the previous agency that details the services they provided? And what were the outcomes of the campaigns they ran for you? Do you have the data? Now, often business owners are taken aback when asked this stuff because they actually lack access to such information. And the invoices they received from these other agencies provided little clarity on what exactly they were billed for and why. Now, your reassurance should be clear. With us, you won't encounter the same frustrations because with our AI agency, we value transparency. We have the technology to show you return on investment and we're good communicators. This is gonna be a relationship, unlike the previous agencies. And to back up your words, you want to show them, not just tell them. So for example, here's a dashboard that I like to show in meetings with prospects to give the business owner assurance of the data that they'll get at their fingertips. Then show them the monthly reporting you provide. So here's an example of automated reporting that I provide to clients, and it shows things like the leads generated, growth in website traffic, clicks, improvement in their social media performance and their overall online presence. So with my agency, you are gonna get access to all of this stuff. And this is what my invoice looks like, and I provide a detailed breakdown of every product and every single article I've written, rather than just a generic bundled fee. And lastly, offer to have regular client check-ins. Make them feel that with you, they'll be having a relationship and not just be sold to and left to their own devices. Okay, so moving on to objection number two. And this one goes like this. Oh, you're too expensive or, but the other agency down the street is charging way less. If you're an AI agency who hasn't come across this, believe me, you will. If you have already come across this, do stay tuned because I'm gonna share with you a new way to approach how you sell so that you minimize the amount of times that you perhaps even get this objection. Now, my best advice for how to approach this is to contrast the example of a good painter versus a bad painter. A bad painter, as you perhaps might know, doesn't show up on time, does half the job, leaves a mess everywhere, and you end up having to go paint over the spots they missed. They were cheaper, but you're gonna ask yourself, was that worth it? It absolutely wasn't. Meanwhile, a good painter shows up on time. They consult you on the options that work for your house. They have exclusive access to certain paints and they even paint a test wall for you. They clean up after themselves and although you paid more, you can sit there at the end of the project and relax knowing it was all worth it. So you wanna emphasize that you're the painter, but for marketing and AI. 
you add value by taking a consultative approach and provide options that fit their needs rather than just ram product down their throat. Now, like I mentioned in the last example, perhaps you offer things like automated reporting and AI products that businesses can use. But in my opinion, the best way to deal with this is to structure your offer in a way so you don't even get an objection. See, the thing that many agencies try to do is they try and sell a whole massive package that includes every product in the world a business could possibly need and not even need. Instead, try offering a sampler pack, like an essential starter package that bundles three essential services. So for example, an AI chatbot, social media marketing, and automated review responses. So from a local business owner's perspective, it feels small, it looks easy and it seems cost effective. And for you as an agency, it allows you to get your foot in the door and then you can work your way up to big ticket items like full scale workflow automations and AI powered digital ads after you've established trust with that client. Now, before we move on to our final objection, I would love to know what is the most common or most unusual objection that you've come across from a client or prospect and how did you deal with it? please drop a comment because I and many other agency owners would love to know and share our experiences together. And please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and that notification bell as well, so you know when our next video is out. Okay, the last objection we'll look at is the most dreaded one, and that's why I saved it for last. And that is being brushed off or being ghosted for whatever reason. Now, many times you'll hear prospects say things like, hey, I don't have time right now. Uh, I'll think about it and I'll call you back. Or, hey bud, why don't you call me back in six months? Well, why don't I make it nine months or 12 months? Now, there are many ways to deal with this. And one of them, quite frankly, is to go to TikTok and keep on top of the amazing trends in the sales world. One of them, which has really inspired me lately, is the 30 seconds to success strategy, where you ask for 30 second blocks of a prospect's time when you're on the phone with them. Oh, hi, Brett, right? Yeah, this is Brett. Brett, you run that roofing company here in town, is that right? Yeah, that's us. Great, thought so. Um, listen, I've been helping some local businesses here in town reduce their workload with artificial intelligence and automation. So this is a bit of a sales pitch, and I'm sure you're busy, so you can just choose to hang up now, or if you can give me just 30 seconds of your time, I can explain why I'm calling. <clears throat> Thanks, Brett. So my name's Vishal and I work with local business owners like yourself to help them identify these really time consuming manual processes that may be slowing them down or costing them more money than they're worth. So typically they're feeling tired of all the admin work, like sending out estimates and invoices or answering calls outside of work hours when they'd rather be spending that time with their family, right? But maybe you'll tell me you're already using AI and automation to handle this stuff, you're not chasing down invoices, and you don't have to answer your phone while you're on site or at home to book your next job, right? Well, I'm not using AI, no. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Now, if you're able to just give me 30 seconds more, I'll tell you exactly how I think I can help. If you like what you, if you, like what you hear, we can set up a meeting or book another call. Now, all of that's great, but in my opinion, what you really want to do is go into any prospect discussion by arming yourself with sales intelligence. So if you can identify things that are personalized and matter to a prospect beforehand, like being outranked by a competitor in search, a weak social media presence, automations to handle the deluge of calls and leads that they tend to get and solve that pain point, then you can try and leverage all of that information. Another tactic you can use is to send the prospect a case study. And this one's my preferred one, especially when they're in a real hurry to get off the phone. So if you can try and get their email address at the very least, that's still a win. And this case study should highlight key information like the customer's problem and how you helped them solve it, the results you generated, the products and services you provided, and a client testimonial. Now, if you do want me to build you a case study template and give you a detailed example that you can share for local businesses for your prospecting, 
please drop a comment and I'd be happy to create it and share it in a new upcoming video. Now, coming back to getting their email and sending a case study, after that, you hopefully have a good email outreach system and can add them to a sales campaign or a drip and keep on track of whether they're uh, clicking on that case study and other information you've sent them. Speaking of which, if you want to know the best times to do your sales outreach, the best days and the optimal uh, cadence, please look at the previous video I did on cold emails and what a good cadence looks like. That's it. Those are three common objections we looked at. So just to recap, when it comes to a hesitant prospect that's been burned before, empathize with them and show them. Don't just tell them what makes your AI agency different. If you come across a pricing roadblock, convince them of the value behind the higher price versus what the other options are and versus your competitors. And try and start with small, affordable packages to get your foot in the door. Lastly, the best way to minimize a prospect brushing you off is to do your research beforehand. And if you're still having a hard time getting through, definitely try some of those good tactics that you see quality salespeople use on TikTok and other social media. Get their email, send a case study, and politely persist over time using the magic of sales and email automations. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It helps my team and I out a lot. Happy overcoming objections. Have a good day.